In this video, I'm going to go over the formulas associated with projectile motion. So let's begin with the basics, the kinematic formulas. Whenever you have an object move in with constant velocity or a constant speed, the displacement d is equal to the velocity multiplied by the time. The displacement is the change in position. In the x direction, it's equal to the final position minus the initial position, xf minus xo. In the y direction, it's yf minus y initial. Final position minus initial position. Now, whenever you have an object moving with constant acceleration, you have these equations. Final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus at, acceleration multiplied by time. You also have v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ad. And displacement is also equal to one half the initial velocity plus the final velocity times t. So this is basically average velocity. So it's just average velocity times t. Very similar to this equation. Whenever you want to find the average of something, you add two things and then divide it by two. Displacement is also equal to v initial t plus one half a t squared. Now we we'll also need to go over some vector equations. So let's say we have the velocity vector and we have the x component and the y component of that velocity and the angle. The x component of the velocity is v cosine theta. The y component is v sine theta. And if you need to find the angle, you could use arc tangent, arc cosine, or arc sine, depending on what you have. But if you have vx and vy, it's arc tangent and vy over vx. And if you need to find v, it's the hypotenuse. So the magnitude of the velocity, or the velocity vector, is going to be the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. Now, let's go over some projectile motion formulas. So this is the first common trajectory you'll see. So let's say you have a ball, it rolls off a cliff, and then it hits the ground. Sometimes you may need to calculate the height of the building, other times you need to calculate the range of the ball. A lot of times you'll be given the initial speed, sometimes you may have to find it, and sometimes you need to find the time it takes for the ball to hit the ground. Well, the height of the building is one half gt squared. So if you know the height, you can find the time it takes to hit the ground. If you know the time it takes for it to hit the ground, you can calculate the height of the building or the cliff. Next, we have the range. The range is equal to vxt. Now, v initial, because it's moving in the x direction, v initial is equal to vx. Now keep in mind, vx is v initial cosine theta. When you're moving in a horizontal direction, the angle is zero degrees. Cosine of zero degrees is one. So we get that the range is also equal to V initial times T. So make sure you understand that VX is V initial cosine theta, but when moving in a horizontal direction, <laughs> let me say that again. When moving in a horizontal direction, cosine zero degrees is one. So this leads to VX being equal to V initial. But if you want one equation to remember, this is the one I would commit to memory because it will apply for all three trajectories that I'm going to give you. But a lot of times with this problem, you won't be given an angle because it's assumed that you'll know it's zero degrees. But if you use this formula, you'll get the right answer in either case. But in order to calculate the range, you need the time it takes for it to hit the ground, which you could find it from this equation if you know the height. Now, if you need to calculate the final velocity, it's equal to the square root of v initial squared plus gt squared. So if you know the initial velocity and the time it takes to hit the ground, you can find the final velocity as it hits the ground. If you need to find the angle of that uh, velocity vector, it's arc cosine of the initial velocity divided by the final velocity. By the way, you could find these formulas in my formula sheet 
in the description section below this video. So I'm not going to go over all of the formulas in this video today because there's a lot in that formula sheet. So if you want the rest, you can print it out. But here are some other ones. If you need to find a time, if you know the height, it's 2h over g under the square root symbol. Now the time it takes to hit the ground also equals the square root of v final squared minus v initial squared over g. Those are some other ways to find it. If you need to calculate the initial speed, it's r square root g over 2h. And if you need to calculate the range, it's v initial square root 2h over g. Again, you could find these formulas and more in the formula sheet. Now, let's move on to the next trajectory. So let's say we have a ball. It's kicked off the ground and it goes back to the ground. Let's call this point A, point B, point C. So this is the maximum height and this is the range. The max height is equal to V initial squared sine squared theta over 2G. The range is equal to V initial squared sine 2 theta over G. Now, if you know the angle and the initial velocity, you could determine the maximum height and the range. However, sometimes you may need to find the initial launch angle given the height and the range. So here's some other equations you want to know. So the initial angle is arc tangent 4h over r. So if you know the height and the range, that is the maximum height, you could find the initial launch angle. So that equation also can be rewritten this way. 4h is equal to r tangent. So if you have the range and the angle, you could find the maximum height. If you have the height and the angle, you could find the range. For the equation of trajectory, you could find that in the formula sheet for those of you who are interested in it. If you need to calculate the initial velocity, there's three formulas. Here's one of them. It's the square root of RG over sine two theta. The rest are in the formula sheet. If you need to find the time it takes to go from A to B, it's equal to V initial sine theta over G. And to go from point A to point C, it's simply twice that value. So those are the most common equations you'll see for that particular trajectory. Now for the third case, it's when you have a ball and it's launched from a building or a cliff and it follows this trajectory. Let's call this point A, point B at the top, and point C. Actually, let me draw a better picture. So here's point A, this is point B, that's point C. So H, which is the same as Y initial, is the height of the building or the cliff. This, we'll call this H as well. So this is the maximum height if you cut it off here. But the maximum height relative to the ground, let's call that H max. And this is gonna be the range. So if we need to calculate the maximum height relative to the ground, it's equal to the height of the cliff 
plus the other h, which is v initial squared sine squared theta over 2g. To calculate the range for this problem, you need v initial, you need the launch angle, and you need the time it takes to go from a to c. So here's the launch angle, and this is v initial. Now, in order to find the time it takes to go from a to c, you could use this formula. v initial sine theta over g plus the square root of 2 times the maximum height divided by g. There's another formula that I have in the formula sheet where you could find this time without knowing the maximum height. If you know the initial speed, the launch angle, and the height of the building, y initial, you can also find the time it takes to go from a to c. Now, if you need to calculate the final velocity before it hits the ground, you could use this formula. And if you need to find the direction of that vector, you could use this formula. Let's call this final angle. Now this will give you the reference angle relative to the positive x-axis. So this is the initial angle, and that's v initial over v final. So likely you'll be given the initial velocity and the initial launch angle, which you'll plug in here. And using this equation, you'll get VF. So that'll help you to get the angle for VF. Now, of course, another way in which you could find VF will be using the vector formulas that I mentioned earlier. So first, you'll have to find VX, which is the V initial cosine theta. Then you need to find VY final, which is v initial sine theta minus gt. Once you have these two, you could find vf, which is going to be the square root of vx squared plus vy final squared. vx is always the same, but vy, it decreases by 9.8 every second. So that's why I put vy final. Now you can also find the final angle using arctangent of vy final over vx. So not vy initial, but vy final. And of course, you could find these formulas in the formula sheet. Now there are some other formulas too that I have there, like formulas to find the initial angle for this trajectory or the initial velocity, as well as the height of the building and also the trajectory as well. So. If you want those other formulas, feel free to take a look at that formula sheet for those of you who might be interested in it. But with these formulas, you can solve a lot of problems already.